This is a short video about um, partitions and tag partitions and Riemann sums. So I've talked about partitions too uh, when I talked about gauge functions for um, continuity. Anyway though, so I'll remind you of this though. Given an interval i, that's the closed interval from uh, a to b here, um, recall that a tagged partition uh, of this interval is the following. So it's a collection of non-overlapping subintervals. And when I say non-overlapping, it's okay if the endpoints overlap, but nothing else. And so the first interval, subinterval, would be from x1 to x0, or, or sorry, x0 to x1. But importantly, x0 is your endpoint of your interval. And then so the next interval, i2, would start at x1, so x1 to x2, and so on, until you get to this last interval, whose right endpoint is the uh, right endpoint of your big interval. And what do we take as a convention here? Of course, when I'm making these subintervals, I'm really just trying to chop this up into a bunch of different little subintervals. And so x0, which is a, should be less than x1, should be less than blah, 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 should be less than xn, which is b, remember. And then the other part of being a tagged partition is we should have what are called tags. And so a tag is a point we'll denote by ti. So you pick a point in each one of these subintervals ii. And that's what we'll call a tag. And so when we have these two things together, subinterval with the tag in that interval, we usually denote that as an ordered pair, like I1, T1. And then so the collection of all of those subintervals with their tags is called a tagged partition. So just let's look at an example, like just a picture rather. So for right now, I've got this interval from A to B, and all I'm saying is chop it into a bunch of different little pieces and pick a particular point inside of each subinterval. So this first interval from X0 to X1 is what I'm calling I1, and I pick some point T1 that's a tag in there. So the next interval from X1 to X2 is what I'm calling I2, and the tag that I picked there is actually the point X2 itself. So just some things to, to get across. There's no rhyme or reason for where the tags are in the interval. They could be any point inside the interval. And also my intervals don't have to be like equally spaced. I tried to make that apparent in my picture, like x, x0 to x1 looks like it's a lot smaller than x2 to x3 and so on. And then by the way, like just imagine continuing this way and then I get to the last one. So um, that's how you should view this kind of space in between where it makes the jump from x3, blah, 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 continue until you get to xn minus one. Okay, so the next concept we wanna talk about with the partition, we'll talk about its norm or its mesh. And so the mesh of P dot is defined like this. And so these two bars looks like two absolute values. We'll call that a norm probably. If you take a linear algebra class, you might call it a norm there too. Uh, but what is it? It's the maximum of any of these numbers, x1 minus x0 or x2 minus x1, blah, blah, blah. So pick the biggest one of these numbers and that's the norm. Another way to think about those, it's the length of the longest subinterval in your partition. So if I'm just kind of eyeballing my picture above, to me, it looks like the ones I bothered to draw anyway, it looks like uh, this interval here is the longest subinterval. Therefore, uh, whatever that length is would be the norm. And we'll do a concrete example in a minute too. But just theoretically, it's the length of the width of the longest subinterval. All right, so finally, What's a Riemann sum? So given a function f whose domain is a to b, and let's say you've also got a tagged partition of this interval a to b, so p dot here is a tagged partition of this interval from a to b. We'll define the Riemann sum of this function corresponding to that partition p dot as, so the notation for it will be s parentheses f with a semicolon and p dot. And it's trying to get across, you'll see in a moment, s stands for sum, but of this function f with respect to this partition p dot. And so how do you actually do it? What's the formula? Uh, it is the summation from i equals one to n, f evaluated at each tag times the width of that subinterval where that tag lived. Cool. So let's look at an example to really make this uh, definition sink in a little bit. So let's say you're given a function f that goes from 0, 5 to the real numbers. And the formula for f is x minus 1, x minus 2 plus 2. And let's say you're also given this partition here where we're going to partition 0, 5 into the following subintervals. So the subintervals I'm going to have is from 0 to 1, and I'll pick the tag 0 in that interval. The next subinterval, i2, would be 1 to 3, and I'll pick the tag 2 in that subinterval. And finally, the last subinterval that I wrote down is from 3 to 5, and I picked the tag 5 here. So I have a partition that just has three subintervals, and that's given to me. Okay, obviously, well, never mind. So what we want to do is uh, we want to compute, well, what's the norm of that partition, and also what's the Riemann sum of this function with respect to that partition that we are given.
So let's do the easier part first. Let's do the norm of this partition. So we already said zero one is I one, from one to three is I two, and from three to five is I three. And I'm just gonna compute the length of each of those. So I one has length one, uh, I two has length two, and I three has length two as well. And I just look at what's the biggest of those numbers, one, two, or two. Well, two is the biggest. Therefore, the largest length is two, and so the norm of this partition uh, is equal to two. Next thing we want to do is compute what is the actual value of the Riemann sum for this function x, one, x minus 1, x minus 2 plus 2 with respect to these here. And this is where the tags come into play. And so I, like in the picture, um, you see that uh, the tags kind of determine what you're going to plug into your function. So um, what would this be? So I've got three, um, I should have three terms in my sum. So uh, and let's actually do them. So the first one would be f of 0, the first tag, times the width of the interval where that tag lived. So that's where I'm getting 1 minus 0 here, is that width, plus f of 2 times 3 minus 1, right? That's the width. 3 minus 1 is the width of that subinterval, or the length. I say those a little bit interchangeably. And then finally, um, I should have f of 5. That is the tag for this interval from 3 to 5 times the, the length there, so 5 minus 3. And if you plug those numbers in, right, so I'm saying plug zero into this formula up here. And if you do that, I think you get two. So that'll be two times one. When you plug two into this formula up here, you get two again. So that'll be two times two right here. And then finally, when you plug in five into this formula, I think you get 14. And that would be 14 times this two right here. And when you add those together, I think you get 34. So the value of the Riemann sum of this function f with respect to this partition is 34. Now, if f's a positive function on this interval from a to b, and so what I mean by that is, let's say it's graphs above the x-axis over a, b, then notice when I look at this expression, f of ti times xi minus xi minus one, I can think about this a little bit geometrically. That's the area of a rectangle whose height is f of ti and whose width or his length is xi minus xi minus one. So like this is the area of a rectangle, like length, length times width. I've got a picture for you too. I've got that function f. So I've got those two m points, xi minus one and xi, and I pick some tag in between them. I just want us to realize that uh, the area of that rectangle would be the height, which is f of t i, times the width, which would be, again, the length of the subinterval. So what's another way to think about what is this Riemann sum doing? Well, what we've got is this is the area of a rectangle, is what I'm trying to convince you of here. And this says, hey, add up all the areas of the rectangles that you have, depending on your partition. So in my case above, I have three rectangles. I'm about to draw you a random picture down here where I have some new function that looks like it has four rectangles, say. And so the Riemann sum for that function with those tags that I picked would again compute that shaded area.